Reality Ender 3 version 2, BQB1, head to head for comparison and first impressions. Creality's Ender 3 has been wildly successful for both its out of the box print performance as well as its upgradability. It's not perfect, but for the price, it's hard to argue with the results. Today, we have essentially two upgraded versions of the Ender 3 the official Ender 3 V2 from Creality and the BQB1, made by Big Tree Tech and featuring many of the popular Big Tree Tech upgrades. Their prices are very similar, so we're going to compare them feature for feature, do some test prints, and see which one makes the best first impression. The Ender 3 V2 is the follow-up to the hugely popular Ender 3 from Creality. It's available from their official store and is currently on sale for $270. US As you can see, it's very similar to the original Ender 3, the main differences being a different housing for the hot end, an easy tensioning belt system, and a color LCD. Perhaps the biggest change is under the skin with an updated 32-bit mainboard that comes with silent TMC2208 stepper motor drivers. BQ is the other name of the company Big Tree Tech, of which the accessories are very popular for printers such as the Ender 3. It makes sense for them to launch the B1, effectively an Ender 3 clone, with many of these upgrades already in place. Dimensionally, it's more or less the same as the Ender 3, except it comes with a 32-bit SKR version 1.4 mainboard and TMC silent stepper motor drivers. It also has a hybrid touchscreen, the TFT35 which I've covered on this channel before. It can operate in touchscreen mode or emulate the traditional Marlin LCD. This printer also comes with a magnetic, flexible, removable spring steel sheet. Other features include filament runout sensing and controllable RGB LEDs inside the hot end. This one is priced just a smidgen more than the Ender 3 V2 at US $286. Unsurprisingly, both printers come in very similar boxes. They both use the same type of foam packaging and it does a great job of protecting the printer. Like the original Ender 3, the V2 comes partially assembled. The BQB1 also arrived undamaged with similar foam packaging. And like the Ender 3 V2, it comes partially assembled. In terms of instructions, the Ender 3 V2 has a traditional style booklet the illustrations are clear, the English translation is quite good, and it takes you through assembly right up to loading filament as well as using the slicer. There's also cards for warranty and after sales service. Following the instructions, assembly is quite straightforward and takes somewhere around 20 to 30 minutes. The illustrations are cleared and all parts are clearly labelled. We have the bonus of two bits of plastic to peel off for that super satisfying feel. I found only two issues with mine, the bolts for the filament holder were too long, making it wobble, and the fitment for the extruder wheel was also quite wobbly, meaning it can wobble on top as well. As for the B1, it also has a colour instruction manual, except this one is in the format of a poster. Again, the English translation is quite good, with really clear pictures and lots of appropriate labels. It covers assembly, but not quite as much detail on using the printer afterwards. Again, we have a card for warranty and after sales service. Assembly of this printer was, surprise surprise, very similar, taking somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes and straightforward for anyone mechanically minded who can follow some instructions. The TFT screen also has a piece of plastic to pull off, although this one didn't come cleanly. A highlight was the bags for the bolts that labeled the size as well as the step of the instructions. And another feature of note is the use of a USB-C cable as opposed to a traditional ribbon cable from the hot end to the mainboard. On the hot end side, it's quite secure. On the mainboard side, it does have a little bit of wiggle. With the two printers assembled side by side, it's a good time to inspect the frame and some of the other features. Both printers use 2020 or 2040 V-slot extrusion with matching V-rollers to provide motion. The Ender 3 V2 has these nice tensioning knobs for both X as well as Y, whereas the B1 has a nice tensioning system for the Y axis, but the simpler loosen, pull tight, and then tighten the bolts again system for X. Both printers are of all-in-one construction, and they house their power supplies underneath and at the back. 
Both printers also have a single Z stepper motor to operate the Z axis. The overall width of the Ender is a little bit wider than the B1, but at least it comes with this storage drawer, and that means the LCD is mounted on the right. On the B1, the vertical pieces of the frame are mounted to the body with this unusual bracket system. The bracket on one side also houses the Z stepper motor. I think this system might be a little bit harder to get square, but it has the advantage of allowing fine adjustments if anything isn't quite right. The Ender's hot end is similar to the original Ender 3. It has a heatsink cooling fan and a small part cooling fan, now covered by an injection molded housing. The B1's hot end is quite unique. As you can see, it has twin blower fans that feed a ring style cooling duct from either side. It also has G-code controlled RGB LEDs that can be operated from the touchscreen. Extruder wise, the V2 is the same as the original Ender 3, except with the extruder wheel on top. The B1 has an almost identical design, but adds a simple filament runout sensor. Both printers rely on manual leveling of the bed using four knobs in the corner. The Ender 3 V2 uses traditional and quite small springs, and the Z end stop is fixed in height on the frame. The B1 also requires manual leveling with a piece of paper, but has the advantage of larger, stiffer springs, a popular upgrade for Ender 3s. Another nice feature is the adjustable screw stopper for Z. This makes it easier to swap between different thickness bed surfaces without having to level the whole thing again. It's worth noting that a BL Touch upgrade should be easy as a bracket is supplied and there's already a connector at the back to support a BL Touch as well as a smart filament sensor. As for interface, the new color screen on the Ender 3 V2 is quite attractive. It looks like a touch screen, but it's not. It still uses an encoder wheel and click knob, and the menu structure is very similar to what you find on the traditional Marlin LCD, just with more attractive graphics. G-code files are printed from the front micro SD card slot that goes into the mainboard. The B1 has the hybrid touchscreen, the TFT35, it can emulate a traditional Marlin LCD, or if you hold down the encoder wheel for 3 seconds, you can switch it over to touch mode and control the printer entirely from this interface instead. You can switch back and forth so you get the best of both worlds. We can place our G-code on the mainboard SD card, the TFT SD card, or a standard USB that goes into the TFT. In terms of bed, the Ender 3 V2 has a textured glass bed that sticks to PLA very well when it's hot, but after it cools, the part will remove with just a little bit of persuasion. The B1 comes with a removable textured build surface, so you can remove prints even when the bed is still hot. I thought I would take the chance to look underneath the hood of both 3D printers. As far as I know, this Creality version 4 board is the first 32-bit board by the manufacturer. Without removing it to verify, its footprint looks very similar to the original Ender 3 board. Under the heat sinks are TMC2208 silent stepper motor drivers. The processor is an ARM STM32F103, the same processor as found in the SKR Mini E3. Pronterface reveals Marlin firmware, but version 1 which is impossible, because from version 2 was when 32-bit boards were supported. Thermal runaway protection is enabled, and I believe the TMC2208s are connected in legacy mode, which means no smart features and no linear advance. The Ender 3 V2 has a genuine meanwhile power supply, 350 watts and 24 volts. By looking inside the BQB1, we can learn more about the printer. As expected, we find an SKR version 1.4. This is a superior board because it has a spare stepper motor driver slot meaning we could convert to dual extrusion, plus the processor slightly outclasses that of Creality. The stepper motor drivers aren't listed on the website, but we can see their TMC 2225s. We can also see that the TFT35 touchscreen is a special B1 version. The main difference I can see is a single ribbon cable connector. Those ports we saw on the back of the machine go into a breakout board, and this is already connected to the main board, which means if we add a BL touch, we won't need to open up the case. In fact, judging by the menus for Z offset and BL touch on the LCD, it appears that the firmware is already set up for the BL touch, where the Z end stop would be used for homing and the BL touch for probing. That means a BL touch installation would be literally plug and play. 
One area the B1 lags behind is the power supply. Its specs are quite similar, but it's a generic, uncertified brand. After loading up some filament, my last comparison is between some initial print tests. Each printer came with a tiny 50 gram roll of white PLA, which I used to print the pre-sliced G-code on the SD cards. Both of these prints were quite small and didn't take too long. White is pretty good at hiding defects, but even so, both of these prints look quite reasonable, perhaps the Ender 3 version 2, just a little bit cleaner. The SD card for the Ender 3 V2 has Creality Slicer, which is a Creality skinned older version of Cura. This is a bit limited and I figure most people will be already using better slicers, so I loaded up the standard Ender 3 profile in Simplify 3D and prepared a Benchy. For the BQB1, you're meant to use the newest version of Cura and an importable Cura profile resides on the SD card. The manual gives you the base settings for your printer profile and then you can import the Cura profile. To be more comparable, however, I still use Simplify 3D, but copied over the retraction parameters from Cura. So the benches were off and printing side by side. Both benches suffer from stringing, but the B1 has quite a bit more. Apart from that, they're fairly clean with no surface artifacts, fully formed details and adequate part cooling. On the B1, however, I was having trouble with the sample filament including jams from it tangling, so I reprinted with better PLA. This time around, the results were a lot closer. There's still a little bit too much stringing on both of them, but considering the slicing profiles haven't been tweaked, both printers seem promising. Next up, I picked a vase from Thingiverse because I think they're great at showing how consistent the extrusion is. I also loaded up some silk gloss PLA. Not only does it look good, but the shininess shows off imperfections. As you would hope, the print results for both were quite outstanding. Each shell is strong with uniform extrusion, and there's no surface artifacts either. Finally, a precision torture test with a print-in-place collapsible basket. This would be effective at testing how flat the bed is, as well as the accuracy of the motion system. For the BQB1, the result was spectacular. The central spiral section separated cleanly and I was able to turn and twist the foot to complete the assembly. Such a cool design and I encourage you to visit the link in the description to print one yourself. On the Ender 3 V2, I had some trouble. I stopped the first one because the first layer was too close to the bed, so I adjusted this and tried two more times with the same result. You can see there's a compressed set of layers on the side of the print and this had the effect of fusing the parts together. You can see a similar problem at the base of the benchy, so perhaps the lead screw is binding in that spot. Unfortunately, it means for this test print, it's not going to separate and act as it should. I am confident that this will be a simple fix, and I still feel that both printers are off to a great start. Now, obviously, this is just initial impressions and a full dual review will follow for each of these printers. So far for me, the Ender 3 V2 seems a little bit more polished in its presentation, but the BQB1 seems like it's gonna be a little bit easier to upgrade. In terms of bang for your buck print quality, it's gonna be hard to go past the standard Ender 3. But both of these have upgrades, and it's nice to have the option for those who don't wanna get their hands dirty, but pay a little bit more money and have the upgrades already fitted. If you've got something you really want me to test when I do my review, please leave it down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, Happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.